Welcome back to Black Acre Ranch, guys. And if you haven't told, been able to figure out, the days finally came. It finally rained. <laughs> around that six to eight hundred mark this is the hardest tank to tell on you can tell on the other guys but these are really difficult so we always go inside and look no can you see anything so you can't really tell anyway this is the tank we get all of our well water from and the guy did come out and fix whatever was going on I think that was a controller anyway just the other day I don't know, they were supposed to tell me when they came out and tell me what they did, but I haven't heard a word, but it was working, so we had a lot more water. And I think we're probably around here, which would maybe be 1,800 gallons. We got just shy of a half inch of rain last night and into this morning, and it's still cloudy, so that's been great because the last couple storms missed our property by 300 feet to the east, and then the other one missed our property by about 500 feet to the west. I swear we are in a cursed piece of land, but we did get rain today, about a half inch. Which means we can now check our big tanks and see how much rain we have in those. Because this is the part that comes off this pavilion. It's 6,000 square feet, roofed, and we've already got all these gutters tied in. Now this side drops down to the ground. So it's kind of like a wet system. It does store it in these pipes. We probably do lose a little bit. The other side, we go directly off the gutters and just channel it all the way around. I did this side first. We tried doing that whole other approach, but it didn't work where we stayed up top and just ran it. So we ended up dropping it down. We figured it out though, and that's why we did the other side. Every thousand square feet of surface for an inch of rain gives you 600 gallons. So we should be able to get 3,600 gallons on an inch of rain. We now probably got just shy of 18, so maybe 1,500 gallons between the two tanks. This one's right around 1,200. That one's right around 1,000. Do you remember what they had yesterday, Charlotte? Okay, maybe five to seven hundred there. And then that guy was at what? Like nothing. So it's at all nothing, new. so it's got about a thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you do the math. We got some rain. It's amazing how much green comes back so fast, you know? Like even the pasture out there, you see this green hue on the ground. You know, whenever it goes dry and it stops raining, things go dormant, man. They just look dead. I mean, some of this does look dead, but it bounces back once it starts raining. Yeah, it's getting some green. run for a little while. I don't know if the float is going to turn it off because obviously they never talked to me. So we're going to have to make sure we monitor it. Um, previous times it was filling up what like about 300 gallons an hour, 400 gallons an hour. So we'll give this a couple hours and kind of see where we're at. I don't know what the flow rate is now because obviously it had dropped before. So we'll keep watching it but I really do need to put some sort of an external 
gauge to kind of tell what this thing is at, but I don't want to do it until I frame out this well, well house and insulate it so that way it doesn't freeze on that line in the winter time. So I'm going to wait until winter or until I get everything built before I put something like that in. So hopefully we can get this thing full. And like we said earlier, it's going to share with that other guy. So it'll then eventually drop and we'll fill it back up and eventually it'll equalize. So that's the purpose of this tank being so big. Okay, so we're working here on the south line of five. And so that's all their T posting and all of that. Um, we've already done the post. Okay, so down here there's um, H braces already set up. And so we have doing a double H brace run this time, so it's about 500 feet. When we set these H's or the posts in to make the H's, Man, this ground has so many rocks and hard clay. We had so many times we had to restart our hole or get the big um, chisel side of the pounder and just, even with tractor auger as I was drilling down, it would like seize up. And I've never really had that happen before. So it's been a really weird line to run, to just run into all these problems. And doing T-posts, sometimes you have one or two, they're kind of a problem, but this stretch, it's like everyone, let's pivot. It feels like they get a certain point and then it's just too hard and they need to start pounding it with a sledgehammer. Like that T-post pounder that we have is awesome. Unless there's a rock or something resistance, it just doesn't have enough power to get through that. So it's been, it's been an interesting run. I figured we'd be like stringing lines at this point, but we still are working on these T-posts and it's just going so slow. It's also a beautiful day with all the rain we had. However, it makes it super humid, so we're all a little extra sweaty today. All right, so that was post 11. I think of like 25. So we're making progress, it's just slow. Master 5 sold it in there. Definitely still have some good green stuff going on, but the rain, you can tell, is all happy to get some extra rain. Keep going. Yeah, it's moving. A little. <laughs> that makes you feel good, right? <laughs> it's moving a little bit. Alrighty. Come on, T-post. For how much it's moving, you're doing good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's moved like a whole time. Oh, we got 1,800 gallons still pumping away. We're gonna give it a few more hours and see if we can get up near 3,000 gallons. If you wonder what the buffalo do during the day, ideally, absolutely nothing. They sit, they relax. It's nice to get a little bit more greenery and they chill out. So we said so long to the elders, they had other things to go do today. These T-posts are a beast, man. 
they go down three or four inches it's a nice tease and then it's like mm, mm, and it stops so it's been great to have them we've got about 10 more to finish we're gonna do that but first we got to eat lunch because we peeps eat lunch that's just what we do if you wonder what we eat <laughs> I eat sandwiches. My wife forces me to have tomato and lettuce to make it feel like I'm actually doing something good for myself. It's true, I just and told her daughter. And she has a bunch of salad stuff with... Vegetables and chicken. Borderline rabbit, but she's trying to stay sexy. I will keep my meat and she will keep her salad. So now that we've eaten lunch, it's time to check the water and see how much we've actually gotten. Let's go ahead and do our typical knock. Puts it right there about 1500 so we're just shy i don't remember how much that was when we started you guys probably do um it's been a couple hours we have successfully transferred water warm cool warm right about there 2100 gallons you know once you get it all out of the ground it's nice and cool you can start feeling the difference up here, but we are 2,100 gallons, that's great. All right, before we get back to those <clears throat> fencing, we gotta feed the buffalo. I think they're ready for their little lunch snacks. So we gotta go around the long way because the key's in the tractor way out in the field. So we're gonna go the back door approach. It's a little snug. Doesn't that fence still look good? This is the first part of the fence and it goes all the way down and we're just finishing the last section. It's getting like difficult. She needs to be careful. Shh. Naturally, Ahmed is waiting for us and so are the other ladies. We close the red gate to let us put all of this in without fear of buffalo interference. We got a little water retention going on in our little feed trough. So uh we have a little bit too much water. Well, these have holes, and these three holes are clogged from excess cubes. Chica, will you do the honors? Oh, oh isn't that cute? So Nasty. There she goes, baby. Work it, work it. All right, and the last one. In the face. have to drain it. I think, I think they're all ready for me to go open that gate. Last one. When we actually unload cubes, you saw today how we just went down there, shut the gate first, grabbed the cubes, and then got done with this. We no longer really jump inside each of the troughs to do this. 
when the animals were there, the bulls started just getting really close and personal. So we kind of backed off. And we've seen that a number of times these females are just on each other, man. They're just like a flies on poo, man. They just go crazy. So anyway, we've had a couple breakouts on this fence over here. And we just have now one outside there. We weren't able to get it on camera, of course, because we don't ever expect this, but she just got railroaded right into the side of the rebar, or not the rebar, the barbed wire fence. I don't know if she was picked up and thrown into it, but she just popped right through, and uh, anyway, it wasn't pretty at all. So her front left leg is a little bit sore, it looked like. She kind of has it up a little bit, but it's just telling me, first priority here in the near future, is to take all these feed troughs and move them away from this gate because they have just, and I don't know what the real reason is, last year they weren't so bad, but they've just gotten more feisty around this feed trough. So we're gonna get this one back in, which shouldn't be too hard, and uh, go from there. Do we know who she is? B2. B2. Oh, yeah. Open it more. Good job. So I don't know if you can see that from here, the barbed wire. Um, literally, I swear, she was like rammed with her horns on her side or something and just boom, right through this. So our gapping isn't working very well. We're going to fix the fence a little bit and uh, move these troughs. So I saw an article recently where the, I don't know, second person within a week or something like that had been gored at Yellowstone. Anyway, something like that. Anyway, um, I hope everyone understands that buffalo on ranches are a little bit different than buffalo completely out in the wild. These animals are not domesticated, and we know that. However, they do get a fa little familiarity with us. They're not as stressed when we come up to them necessarily um, as they would be if they're completely in the wild. But they still are wildish animals. So we have to still be careful about it, right? They still act the same way, but you know, there, there's a little bit of a mutual respect. If you're wanting to see buffalo and you want to go up and take pictures of them, go to the NBA website, National Bison Association. I think it's called bisoncentral.com or .org or something like that. Anyway, it's one of those. Look up a bison farmer or rancher in your area and go see those buffalo. You'll get so much closer to the buffalo than you ever will, and you won't get gored. So, just word of the wise, guys. Don't play around with those guys in Yellowstone. Just go over and see your local rancher, and in fact, buy some meat while you're there, too. Mm -hmm. Hi, Kisses. Mm, kisses is so pretty. We think Kisses is pregnant. She might not be as far along as we would hope, but I don't know. I don't know about any of them. Okay, our buffalo cow B2, that's the one right there. She's the one that went through the fence. We've seen her walk, we've seen her do some things. She looks fine. I don't see any even cut marks on her. Despite being shoved or pushed or somehow going right through a bunch of barbed wire. Oh, there's a cut on her leg. You can't even hardly tell anything. So, oh, I guess there's one little cut on her back leg right there. Just right down at the bottom. But other than that, I mean, she seems fine. She hasn't really had anything go, like, go wrong. So, anyway, that'll heal real quick. That's right, next is finish up this line. Storms are coming, you know, at least we believe so. Anyway, this is one spot where we had a number of these T-posts, we went four, and then this is when we need the tractor to pull out because it wouldn't go any further. We go about four inches down and we hit like rock, where it hits something, iron lignite, all this other stuff, and it makes it a pain in the butt. But we have gone all the way down to that wood post in the far distance. We have about nine more, 10, I think, and uh, we're gonna try and wrap these things up before this storm hits. If we're lucky, we can listen to the thunder.
All right, so we've got all these posts in. I think there's like 25. I don't remember. Anyway, there was something like 25-ish or so. So they're all in. Now, if you notice all the whites, the tips on the first section are pretty equal, but they were following the terrain. We're putting them in where the spade that goes on the bottom of the T post, you know, it's just, here, come here. For those of you that don't know, the T post is a T, okay? And it's got these knobbies. This is where the barbed wire goes and you can put it in with a clip and squeezes the barbed wire in between one of these grooves, okay? So when you put it like at the bottom down here, you'd put it, if this was sitting here, it would just sit and rest wherever you want it on that height wise, okay? So this is a spade at the bottom and we're putting them in as far as a spade goes below ground surface, all right? This may be about 16 inches to the top or so. So when we're going along here and you see all the whites and their kind of tips are like this is because we're not trying to get the tip perfect. We're just equalizing with the ground to make sure that these things are in. When we come by with a barbed wire, we may have some get real close to the top. Maybe others will be a little bit further down. It'll kind of fluctuate with the terrain. So anyway, don't look for perfection at the tips because our terrain does that. Just in case you guys were gonna judge me on it. Don't you judge me, Lizzie. Anyway, if any of you watch Pride and Prejudice. So, we are done with this. We just gotta get the barbed wire. That's gonna be another day. If you can't tell, it is raining. So, we're gonna enjoy the rain for a little while. I don't know how long it's gonna last. Probably never long enough. But, we're gonna enjoy it for a little while. And, come back and do this barbed wire maybe another day. Okay. Okay, let's get out of here. I'm victorious. Are those like cloud kisses? What? Oh yeah, they're they're raindrops. Yeah. They're cloud kisses. They are cloud kisses. I love clouds. I love clouds. And for those of you who wonder how much space we have, that is how much between the fence and the tree line. And if you're wondering how much room we have until the barbed wire. That's the barbed wire post. My hand stopped shaking. There. So not too bad. It's a nice little alleyway. So my daughter just counted. There are officially 27 T-posts that we put in. Frankly, it's kind of a cute, nice little pasture driveway that we can kind of run down. So we like it. Hey, grateful for the rain guys we're gonna sit here and actually enjoy this as it continues to fall but we're gonna wrap the video up here hope you guys have a good time and uh, i hope you're getting rain at least in your area it's been about five weeks since we've had any measurable rain so we're gonna enjoy this while it lasts anyway we'll catch you next time here at black acre ranch see you guys bye mm -hmm.